God bless you. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Landmark Church of Holiness through Christ Outreach Ministry, located at 1523 West Washington Street in South Bend, Indiana, where we preach the gospel without compromise, the unadulterated, unmixed, true gospel of deliverance, reaching out to a dying world, letting you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Set your heart, your mind, your ears to receive this man of God who will show you the way to eternal life. Receive ye him, our pastor, Bishop Thomas H. Willis, Jr. God bless you. We would like to uh, watch us each Sunday afternoon on Facebook Live at 1.30 p.m. on the page of Bishop Thomas H. Willis, Jr. And to listen to our evening service every Sunday on WUBS 89.7 at 6.30 to 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in South Bend, Indiana. Amen. We also have a Sunday School Conference call line every Saturday evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, taught by Evangelist Beverly Willis. The telephone number is area code 605-313-5142. And the access code is 388-999 and the pound sign. If you're not able to get through or get on at this time, you can call the playback number, which is 605-313-5153 using the same access code. If your carrier for this line charges, please hang up and dial 716-293-9720 and then dial the 605 number and the access code. We are so happy to be able to share the word of God to you today. Amen. And we pray that something will be said to bless your heart. Amen. And to cause you to want to live. Amen. For Christ all the days of your life. Amen. At this time, we're going to have prayer by missionary Catherine Crawford. Amen. 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 Get out of this man. And let's look to the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for today, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for your word, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for how you woke us up this morning, O oh God, clothing in our right mind, O oh God, able to wake up at your touch, O oh God, at your voice, O oh God, how you watched us, O oh God, all night long, O oh God. No bad news in the night, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that you allowed us, O oh God, to be clothed and in our right mind, O oh God, yet with a mind, O oh God, to serve you, yet with a mind, O oh God, to go through our tests and our trials, O oh God, yet with a mind, O oh God, to have power over the devil, O oh God, to please you, O oh God, and not our flesh, O oh God. Lord, we ask to O oh God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that that you will bless the pastor of this house, oh God. Bless his wife, oh God. Bless this congregation, oh God. Bless, oh God, everyone, oh God, under the sound of my voice, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, let your word go forth, oh God, as never before, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, help us, oh God, to apply it to ourselves, oh God. To not just be here, oh God, but to be doers, oh God. You have your way on today, oh God. In Jesus' name. Glory to your name, O oh God. Amen. Amen. Now we will have scripture by Sister Tiara Frazier. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Give God another just your hand praise. Yes. God bless everyone. I will be reading for your hearing Mark 8, verse 35 through 38. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man 
if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. May God add a blessing to those that hear, receive, and obey his word. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a solo. Amen. By Evangelist Tony Coleman. Let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You're all that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope. For all I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you are the compass for my way. You're the guiding light when the nights are long. And cold, you're the vessel. Hallelujah. You're the goodness of my joy. Ah, you're the guiding light when the nights are long and cold. Jesus. You're the center of my joy. You're all that's good and perfect. It comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of, I say, Jesus, you're the center of, I say, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Amen. Truly, Jesus is the center of my joy. Amen. I thank God. Amen for that solo. Amen. At this time, we're going to bring our pastor, Bishop Thomas H. Willis, Jr. Amen. Let's say amen for him as he comes. Amen. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me.
of God, amen, to worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, y'all know I believe in having church, don't you? Amen. We come to praise God and magnify God. Am I right about it? Amen. Leave all your problems outside the door, amen, and focus on Jesus Christ because God got something for us today. Somebody say, God got something for us today. And I'm going to get mine. 
Give God a victory hand praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, this is an individual thing. You don't get yours, I'm going to get mine. Amen. I mean, I want him to stir up the gift that's in me. I want him to stir up the joy that is within me. I want him to stir up the peace that's within me. Oh, y'all better come on with me now. Amen. God is good. Amen. God has brought me a mighty, mighty long way. And I can only testify for myself. Amen. But I'm a living testimony. Amen. Because sometimes talk is cheap. But I like to live the life. Oh, y'all better hear me now. It gets quiet when you start talking about living sanctified and holy and undefiled before God. That's the only way you're going to make it to heaven. It's to live holy. Amen. And God's people ain't walking around sad and amen. And wish they had never got into this thing. I wish I had never started going to church. Amen. That's the best thing that ever happened to you. If you're going to the right church. Amen. Because every church door is open. Amen. Ain't the right church. It's not the right church. Y'all better come on with me now. Amen. But thank God that God got somebody that's going to teach against sin. Preach against sin. Tell your holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Oh, y'all better come on with me now. And I'm one of those preachers. Yeah, I make my boast in the Lord. Amen. Me no give up Jesus. I ain't taken down. I don't care. Amen. For money. Amen. People don't like it. Amen. Because they're not going to like everything you say or do. But who I'm trying to do, who I got to give an account to? God. Who you got to give an account to? God. So act like it. Oh, oh, they talking about me and they saying this and they oh what do we care about what they say you gotta please God you gotta make it to heaven for yourself hey I'm telling you I'm telling you I don't, I don't just act this thing I'm really amen excited about Christ I'm really excited about Jesus some people have lost the excitement for God some people have lost the excitement for church Church time come, amen. They don't feel like going. Sometimes your body might not feel like getting up. You're tired. Amen. You got to pick that body up anyway. Get out of body that bed and go to church. Go to church. Go to church. Go to church. God's church. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, tell, I'm just going to tell you like it is. Amen. It's every man for himself. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's every man for himself. I have to give an account of what I preach. What the other preachers are preaching, that's between them and God. Amen. But I thank God for the beauty of holiness, sanctification. And look who brought us this far by faith, leaning and depending on him. You know, the last message that I brought last, uh, last Sunday was about the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God. We are here because of the grace of God. That's why you still living. That's why you still in the land of the living. And some people don't even recognize it. They treat God, amen, like he ain't nothing. They don't even honor God. And when they call, when they do try to honor God, they don't honor him in truth. Do you hear what I'm saying? But they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in what? It's got to be real. Come on now, God ain't got you. God ain't got you running through the church, and then as soon as you get out of the church, you going to the tavern. No, no, no. Come on, say it, say it. Child, didn't we have a good time in church today? Why are you sitting up in that tavern? All right. it, it, didn't, it didn't stop you from going to the tavern. It didn't stop you from cursing somebody out. Right. Oh, y'all better come on now. <laughs> but when God's spirit coming to you, He takes everything out that's not like God. Not like God. How, when was the last time you all examined yourself? When was the last time you examined yourself by the word of God? Oh, y'all better come on with me now. When was the last time said, God, am I there? Am I there where I'm supposed to be in you? And sometimes God will show you. A lot of times God will show you through the word. And sometimes the word will come across the pulpit. To let you know, amen, you ain't come, you ain't there, you ain't up there. But you can get up there. Ain't that right, Sister Crawford? 
Amen. I remember how I used to be. In and out of church. In and out of church. In and out of church. Didn't take too much of nothing to me, man, for me to fall out of church. Get mad at somebody. Fall out of church. Do you hear what I'm saying? But I had to grow up. I had to mature. Amen. That's why I am what I am today. By the grace of God. Amen. We only trying to get you to go where we going. Amen. Amen. I got my I got my mindset. You hear what I'm saying? It ain't on no donut neither. I got my mindset on God. On God. Is your focus on God? Or is your focus on the things of this world? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. The Bible said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father, you can about sinking into your shunned No, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. Come on, man. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about, see, when that love of God is down in you, it'll stir up, it'll stir up something. Hey, man, you be at, look, I'm going to tell you, don't start nothing, brother. Yeah, because I'll be right along with you, praising God, glorifying. It's amazing how you got to push people to praise God. What say sanctify it to put come on now? We go through the same things you go through. We have to face problems too. But we glorifying God. We magnifying God. We ain't singing nobody know the trouble I been. No bad. We ain't singing the blues. Huh? But we're singing when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing there will be. That's it. Or when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. You got a victory and pray. Hey! God, my God, my God, 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 my God, my God, my God. Woo! Hey, hey. <laughs> God is good, y'all. Why he acting like? Why he acting like that? Cause God is good. Could have been dead and in my grave, but God made death behave. Oh, y'all better come on with me now. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the devil. Of the Lord. <laughs> Get God a victory hand pray. Now y'all know what? Two or three. Got it together. You be in the midst. Amen. Don't let the devil cheat you for getting your joy, for getting more power. Don't you know what? When you come to church, you ought to be able to get something and carry it home with you, and you can still feel good from from from, from, from the church service. Do you hear what I'm saying? Man, I still feel God moving in my spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? But it's up to you. Come on now. It's up to you. We've got to be like these little chickens, these little uh, birds that be up there in the nest, and they be waiting on the food. As soon as they see the, the, the mother bird come, they be going, they ready to eat. Amen. You ought to be ready to eat. You ought to be ready to praise God. <laughs> That's all right. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Do y'all really love him? Do you really love him? Deep down. You know what? You know how you have to prove that you love God, don't you? Do you? What you got to do? Keep his commandments. Amen. amen. I always say this. Amen. I have to prove that I love my wife. Oh, it's quiet. I have to prove it. If I mistreat her, I ain't proving that I love her. Slapping her upside her head don't mean I love her. Mistreating her don't mean I love her and vice versa. But then when bedtime comes, it's baby, I love you. 
Oh, uh, y'all better come on now. They ready to sing a love song. You, you go somewhere and sit down. Yeah, man. God is the same way. If you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. What is it about keep my commandments? You don't understand. We got to continue to keep God's commandments. Is that every day? Y'all sure we got to keep God's commandments every day? Night and day? So they say nighttime is the right time. But for some people, the nighttime is the wrong time because that's when they want to do their dirt. But you know God can see you in the nighttime, don't you? The eyes of the Lord is in every place. Beholding the good and the evil. You know exactly. I don't care where you try to hide. Hide. Amen. The psalmist said he's there. You can make your bed in hell. He's there. You can go to the to the deep of the sea. He's there. There's no way we can get away from God. And you know what? Everything we do is written down. Everything you do, every nasty word you say is written down. Every attitude that you have is written down. Every, oops, my bag, I didn't mean to say it like that, is written down. I just got to tell it like it is. So when you stand before God, you can try to lie if you want to, but it's going to be rehearsed over in your mind. You say something, you can't say, some of us will try to lie, though. I didn't say that. Yeah, yes, you did. You'll play it back. It's in the Bible. Now, just, just think about it. He's God. Omnipotent. He's God. He's almighty, all-powerful. Knows all. Knows everything. Can't get it past God. So why do you want to try? You can't hide behind the stuff that you're doing. You can't hide. Amen? That's why us preachers got to walk and be real. I'm telling you, we got to be real, y'all. There's no time for us to compromise even with the saints in the church. I don't care if they don't never like it. You know, well, I, you know what? He ought to need to tone it down a little bit. You talk to God about that. See what he, let me know what he says. Go, go to God. Don't go to other people and say, don't you think he need to tone it down? Don't you think he need to change his message? I'm giving you what God wants you to have. Oh, y'all better come on now. Hey, Amen. Look, if you had a hamburger store, you wouldn't go to a hamburger store and it's got chicken unless they sell hamburgers and chicken. But if it's just a hamburger store, you're going to get a hamburger. Right. Amen? Amen? So you go in there and say, well, I want to I wanna have a chicken. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to go to Kentucky. You're in the wrong place. Come on now. If you want to sin in this church, you're in the wrong place. Uh-oh. Now, you can come as you are, being a sinner, but God will touch your heart and mind, and you got to be able to receive it. And when you receive it, then you want to go out different than when you came in. Amen, amen. Oh, y'all better come on now. <laughs> Jesus made a difference in my life. Did he make a difference in yours? I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all. Some of y'all, when your friends met you right after you got saved, they didn't even know you was the same person. The way you looked, you dressed different. Now these folks out here want to dress just like the world, look like the world, want to put on everything the world got. Come on now, we can't put on every fashion that the world got on. Come on now. We got to make a difference between clean and unclean. We sanctified. You ain't got to, you ain't supposed to be looking like the world. The women ain't supposed to look like the world. The men ain't supposed to look like the world. Love not the world. Again, I'm going there. I'm going there. Isn't this cute? And you got somebody just as weak as you are. Girl, you got it going on. Look at, look at them legs. Girl, you got them going. You showing too much leg. Then the Bible says, adorn yourself. I don't know why I'm going this way. Adorn yourself in what? That go for us men too. That's right. That's right. 
We can't wear everything. Amen. Amen. I look at some of these pants that these, some of these young men have on, and sometimes, I mean, it look like stove pipe pants and so tight. And it, it just holds on to it. What you do? You can't pick up every fashion that's out there in the world. Your, your waistline ain't supposed to go down there under your behind. No, no, no. Pull your pants up. Amen. You say you sanctify. Come on now. See, we teach clothes wearing too. We, we get that. We, we we try to cover every Amen. category. Well, I don't want to go there because see, you know, I, I don't think it's not the outward appearance. God knows what's in the heart. Yeah, what comes forth from a man coming forth from his heart. Amen. Come on now. Amen. 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 Just got to tell it like it is. Yeah. See, that's why I don't like that church. They got too many rules and they got too many regulations. Amen. But we evangelists always, and some of us other preachers always say, you, are, you obey that rule and regulations on the job. Right. Right. Say it. They tell you that you want, you got to come back at 1215. You ain't going to argue with them. You're going to be back at 1215 or you're going to get docked or fired. Now, how can you? How come you can honor the natural man, but can't hand, uh, honor the man of God and God? Come on now, who's the one to give you life? Are y'all sure about that? Oh, the man on your job, child, he's my life. Cause see, if we without him, I wouldn't have no money. God will open up the door. Don't sell out for money. Don't sell out for money. Just gonna tell it like it is. Some people didn't give it in. To, you know what happened to Judas, didn't he? He sold Jesus out for what? That wasn't too much of nothing. And then he turned around and felt guilty and went and hung himself. Don't you know the devil will have you out there in the world, and the next thing you know, you out there and, and killed yourself. Committed suicide. And you're going, what? Because the devil that took you out there and drew you out there, and now you miserable. You see what the devil has done? He don't, he don't come out openly where you can really see him like you, you know, you would see him. He has tactics. He disguises himself. He lets you, he try to let you know that he got it going on if you just say do this and if you just do that. And then don't you know that some of us did take that? Thought I can do better. Man, I'm telling you, when I was out there, when I actually went out there, I can relate to him. When I went back outside, I was miserable. For real. I'm going to tell you, I was having fun, but I was miserable. That's a, that's a bad way of life, living, ain't it? I would be sitting up in the tavern with my friends, smoking and drinking. Couldn't smoke, no way, but I just wanted to act like it, that I knew what I was doing, halfway choking on it, because you know, you know, you try to be cool like everybody else. You know, a, a pack of cigarettes lasts me almost six months. <laughs> it did, because I might have smoked one, maybe the next time I go out. But you know what happened? I was, I'm, so, I'm so glad God was dealing with me. When I got high, I would sit up there in the church and talking to my friends in the tavern because I already knew that God had to work for me. And you see what the devil did? He tricked me to the point where I went out into the world because I was surrounded by a lot of people. Oh, man, come on. Come on now, you know. I wasn't going to church. See what happens when you stop going to church? I wasn't going to church. I wasn't seeking God. I wasn't in my Bible. You know, I wasn't hanging around the saints. I was hanging around nothing but sinners. And they will entice you. You don't have to listen to them, but they will entice you. And when you weak in the faith, did y'all hear what I'm saying? When you get weak in the faith, you don't have strength to say no. You know what? I, I ended up going out there. But man, the devil said, look at that. They have a ball. I'm looking at that. One time I used to see men. Y'all yeah, remember the time when the men used to uh, hot comb their hair? 
curly hair. That was one of the styles then. And when I when I was what's it called that? Superfly. That was one of the styles. And I was saved one time. Me and Vandy was on the bus, and I was saved. And somebody came on the bus, one guy, and his hair was pressed and all stuff like that. And I said, I'll never wear nothing like that. that, is, that that's, a, that's a shame. Guess what, y'all? When I backslid, I went to the barber chair and sat down, and I wanted my hair pressed and curled. And I got it pressed and curled, and I got it dyed. You see what the devil, whoo, I feel that in my spirit. You see what the devil will do to you? He will change your heart and your mind towards God. You can't say what you ain't going to do if you ain't got no power. I don't, I don't know what happened. It just, it just happened. You stopped doing what you were supposed to be doing. Being faithful to God. In the word. It's important that you get in the Word. It's important that you turn the TV off and listen to God in the Word and pray to God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God so you can stay strong in God. I don't know. I don't know how this happened. Think about it. What did you stop doing? He that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be what? If you're hungry and thirsty and going after, you're going to be filled. God going to feed you, boy. He going to feed you. He going to feed you his word. He going to give you what you need to stay strong. Come on now. Don't you know sin is greater than you? When you're not saved, it's bigger than you. But God gives us power every hour to go through. When we are approached by sin, it's the power of God, the anointing of God. This is the reason why we're standing today. Somebody that listen, you go to church all the time. Well, you go to the stat to the taverns all the time. So this is what I love. That's what you love. I told you you gotta get you 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 know what? Some people gotta learn how to have an attitude. And I ain't talking about a nasty attitude. But I'm, what I'm saying is letting them know how serious you are about your salvation. If I don't bother you about your sin, don't bother me about my holiness. Oh, y'all better come on now. Amen. We all got to stand before the judgment seat. Amen. amen, amen, amen. One more time. I'm telling you, boy, I can just go on and on and on. But we got a little speaker here today. Man that we have known for years. You can come in fellowship with us at Old Landmark Church. Amen. And I started to say South Bend. We're in South Bend, but in Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. Man of God. And we want to hear some words from him. We want him to give us what God will put in his heart and his mind. Amen. Bishop, what is it? Lavelle Anderson. Amen. From Lighthouse Evangelist Prayer Cathedral. Let me put my, uh, you know, sometimes we be trying to read anyway. You know we need glasses. Bishop Lavelle Anderson from the Lighthouse Evangelist Prayer Cathedral in Los Angeles, California. It's so good to have you here, sir. It is really so, I've heard so much about you from the brother there. Amen. The fellowship. And he said how much he really wanted to come and have fellowship with. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to what? Dwell together in what? We might not agree with everything, but when it come down to sin, we better agree. Y'all better come on with me now. Amen. You, you might like a red hat. I might not like a red hat. So that's between you and the red hat. Hey, Amen. But we want to give him some words, and I want him to take his time if he wants. Amen. And give us a little something. He didn't, he didn't come for this, I know, but, you know, we don't want to let the preacher go without him saying something. Yeah, I'm going to write about it. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to sit down, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat. Y'all got your forks out and your, your knives? And, 
No, don't use the knife because you might try to cut something out. So, Amen. So, God bless you, Bishop Anderson. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. Let the church say amen. amen. Come on, shout amen again. Amen. Giving honor to the Spirit of Christ, to our bishop, to our elect lady, and to all of you that are in our Father's house. Amen. I want you to understand something today, that God has sent us this way in order that we might learn that he is the way, amen. the truth, and life, amen. and there is no other way. No. Amen. Listen to me today. The churches are not supposed to be filled because where the filling was was not inspirational. It was a time when we just got together, but it was not a time to learn the things of God. So what did God do? He closed the brick and mortar, and he allowed us now to come together in relationship. He allowed us to come together in real fellowship. Now the mega churches are closed and the churches that are open are those now who are listening to what the Spirit of God is saying for such a time as this. From the book of Acts chapter 14, and I want you to just listen to me carefully. There are several scriptures I want to bring, Bishop, and they are being brought because of the virus that we're in. How many of y'all know that the pandemic is a judgment sent by God? To bring us back into the house of God with a renewed life. Are y'all hearing me? So the book of Acts chapter 14 beginning with verse 21. Listen to the purpose of the church. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconia and to Antioch. What did they do? strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying we must through what? Many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Listen to me very carefully. If you are not going through anything, you don't have anything. Let me say that again because somebody missed it. If you are not going through anything, then you don't have anything. Why? Because in this life, if you are in the light, people will shun you. Why? Because they love darkness. And so the Bible said that when they had preached, what? The gospel. And what is the gospel? The death, the burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And look at your neighbor saying, coming again. We're in a place now where the gospel is not being preached. We're preaching techniques. Hello? We're telling you how to do one, two, and three. Instead of telling you that this is death coming if you're not written into the Lamb's book of life. Are y'all hearing me today? So he said that the gospel was preached in that city. And what happened? When the gospel is preached, many disciples were, what, refreshed. What's happening in the church today? They're singing. Hello? The choir were doing A, B, C, and a D. I'm on the line. Don't hang up. Amen? The usher will ush. The deke will deke. And when the preacher preached, nobody's listening. Why? Because they're saying he's taking too much time. But the choir did four selections. How many of y'all know that the purpose of the church is to hear? Faith cometh by, hearing by. The most important thing is not the choir or the organ or the deacon or the clerk. It's the word of the living God. And so the Bible said when they had preached the gospel, what happened? The souls were strengthened and they exhorted them to continue what? In the faith. I need you to understand two things. The definition of faith is written in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith. And that now is capital N, capital O, capital W, which means it's in the present tense. Now faith is the substance of things what? Hoped for, but the evidence of things not to. 
I don't see all that God is doing, but I trust him enough to launch out and step out on nothing and land on God's word. Are y'all hearing me today? And so the Bible said that we must through many tribulations and again, trials and tribulations are to effect your growth and to mature you in the things of God. That's why we don't have testimony service today because the testimonies have grown old. Hello? We're not interested in what God did 10 years ago. What did he do today? Hello? He woke me up this morning, started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me when? Right? Oh, I need some help in here. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? Not what I ate on yesterday, but what am I going to eat today? The gospel pill is what we need on a day-to-day -day basis. Now listen to me. What did they do in the church? When they had appointed elders in the church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. What's our purpose now? Our purpose now to, is to increase ourselves. Back in the day when I was growing up, they said everyone would bring one. Yep. If you bring one, that's two. Right. And if they bring one, that's more. Right. And what happens is folk used to come running to church. Hello? And what did they run to? The altar. Yes. What did they run to? Their knees. Praying and ministering unto God even before church started. Hello? The choir was only allowed to do an A and a B. Hello? And the A and B was conducted to what the preacher was going to preach. They didn't just sing anything. They didn't sing from anybody. But they sang hymns that were written for the saints to be edified. Hello? Yes, yes. We didn't have guest soloists in those days because you had to be tried and true and faithful in the word of the living God. Are y'all hearing me? And so the Bible said that after they had preached even the word in Pergamos, they went down to Antilia and there they sailed to Antioch where they had been what? Commended by the grace of God for the work which they had completed. I heard the bishop say earlier today, it's not many of us, but guess what? It only takes one. Yeah. One can put to flight a thousand and two, 10,000. What are we talking about? Sending spirits out of our congregation, allowing people to be healed and delivered and set free. I heard many years ago that there was a revival in the country of Wales and the revival went 52 weeks but only one soul was saved out of 52 weeks of church just one but who was that one Stanley Livingston who conquered Satan in Africa and where millions of folk were saved by one man who was saved in Wales let me tell you, you don't know who's among you until you accept the fact that God wants to use you. Amen? Amen? Let me give you the other scriptures so I can close. But I need you to understand, look at your neighbor and say, you need to know how to conduct yourself. The Bible has given us three C's, conduct, character, and consequences. Hello? Are y'all here? Conduct, character, and consequences. First Thessalonians. Go to First Thessalonians chapter 4. If it's not in the book, then we can't preach it. First Thessalonians chapter 4. And looking at verse number 1. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound how? More and more just as you receive from us how you ought to what walk and to please god someone said earlier and i heard the bishop say used to be in the church people would tell us how to live 
even how to dress. Hello? Where did the prayer claws come from? They didn't come because we were praying. They came to cover folk up. If they were not dressed properly, nobody embarrassed you, but the old mothers would go and just cover you up until you got saved and understood that it was time to dress up, not dress down. Are y'all hearing me? And so the Bible said, verse number two, for you know that commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. What? For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Now, sexual immorality is not just between a man and a woman. It's also between your religion and God. Because you are married to Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? And you can't do everything everybody else do. Look at your neighbor and say, conduct. How do people look at you? How do people receive you? They receive you by what you do and how you act. Hello. And so when we look at conduct, the Bible said this, verse number three. Look at it again. For this is the will of who? God. Your what? Sanctification. Somebody say clean living. That you should abstain. Abstain means stop from sexual immorality. Verse number four, that each of you, each of you, who's each of you? Say me. That you should know how to possess your own vessel in sanctification and honor. Nobody have to tell you how to live and act. You need to know that for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What does it mean? It means that when I hear the word of God, I allow it to react in me. And whatever is not right, I repent. I get to the altar and get clean. And then I walk in ways of righteousness. Irregardless to what other folk think. And irregardless to what other folks say. Are y'all hearing me today? And so the Bible said that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also forewarn you and testify. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but to holiness. Now, let me tell you, look at your neighbor and say, holiness is not a dress style. It's a lifestyle. Amen. Holiness is not a denomination. It's the word of the living God. For the Bible said, without holiness, no man can see the Lord. Let me give you my final scripture from the book of First Peter, from the book of First Peter, chapter five. And I want you to listen to me very carefully. He used to sing a song, the devil is on my track, trying to turn me back. Y'all don't hear me. Hello? How do y'all know that that's the devil's job? Your job is to resist the devil. I can't hear nobody. Because the Bible said, resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Look at your neighbor and say, you're not the only one going through anything. Hello? You're not the only one been set outside. You're not the only one people have cussed out. You're not the only one people going to talk about. Look at your neighbor and say, get in line. Hello, you got to learn how that through the suffering that you're going through is going to perfect you in the things of your character. Old things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Old places I used to go, I don't go anymore. Why? Because there's been a change within. Something within I cannot explain. Something within that banishes pain. All that I know is there's something within. What's within? The spirit of the living God who's in resident to direct you and correct you. I didn't hear you. To direct you and correct you. So, somebody said, well, you don't understand, preacher, I'm going through. Look at your neighbor and say, so is everybody else. 
That's what conduct and character is all about. Why? Because conduct and character will bring consequences. And the Bible says you will reap. I can't hear nobody. You see, if you put it out, it's coming back. And the book of Proverbs says, what you cast up on the waters, not many days, it shall return. So let me finish by giving verse number 10. It says, but may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, uh-uh, comma, after you have what? I can't hear you. Oh, oh, comma. Let's stop right there. After you've gone through something, after you testified how God has brought you out, after you testify that the devil thought he had you, but you got away. Listen, he said, after you have suffered a while, he's going to do what? First of all, perfect. Look at your neighbor and say, nobody is perfect, but we're striving for perfection. On a what? A day-to-day -day basis. Amen. A good man followed how many times? Seven. But what does he do? He get up. Look at your neighbor and say, get up. Because it bears consequences. People see us and they say, well, you, you're trying to be perfect. No, we're not trying to be perfect. We're striving to be perfect. We're striving to live right. We're striving to do right. Why? Because the Bible says he's going to perfect us. How does he perfect us? Through the word of the living God. Then he said he's going to establish. Y'all know what the word establish means? That's to make a firm foundation. To put you in a place where no matter what the enemy is doing, you're still moving forward. Somebody said, well, I was sick. That's what healing is all about. Somebody said, I was down. That's what lifting is all about. Somebody said, I was out. That's what's coming in is all about. Are y'all hearing me? He wants to establish you in front of folk through your conduct and your character. How you live amongst others and how you live by yourself. When nobody is listening, nobody is looking. Look at your neighbor and say, you still got to live right. Then he said he's going to strengthen. And how does he strengthen us? Through the word of the living God. No wonder preachers are being fired. Hello? They're being fired by who? By the word of God. Folk are dying like flies. Why? Because they have been in the way instead of teaching the way. And so what God is doing now is he's exposing false prophets. What is God doing now? He's exposing apostles. What is he doing now? He's exposing evangelists and pastors and teachers, those that just wanted a car, an airplane, or a house, instead of looking at souls. Hello? Are y'all hearing me? About ready to close. But he said, not only will he strengthen us, he will settle you. And the word settle means he's going to guide and protect you. Just a few days ago, I lost my wife. The Lord brought her home, and then I found myself alone. I had to find a way back into that place where it was just a relationship now between me and the Lord. And what does the Lord do? He satisfied and strengthened me as I went into the word of the living God. He became my companion. And what does he want to do today with you? He wants to become your companion. He wants you to Get your conduct and your character in line so that the consequences are, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, because the world never comes to an end. I want everybody to just lift your right hand. Put your right hand up. Amen. Why? Because this is the right hand of fellowship. And we pray today that as you leave this ministry, you will get yourself into a place now where faith becomes the primary focus, where love becomes the idea, and where justification of what you're going through, you will not complain. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout it. And everybody shout it. God bless you.
y'all enjoy that? Did you enjoy that? Amen. We ain't the only one that's preaching. Amen. God got somebody. He will not leave himself without a witness. Am I right about it? It's holiness without which no man shall who? See the Lord. So you're not going to see God anyway doing it your way. It's got to be God's way. And there's a way that might seem it right to the man, but the end of that way is the way of what? Death. Amen. It might look glamorous. Amen. Amen. But nevertheless, you got to walk the way God tell you to walk. And that's to be holy, sanctified, undefiled, before God. In this life, you know you're going to have to suffer some persecution. As he was saying, you're going to have to go through something. Come on now, you even, you suffering now. And some of y'all are suffering now, ain't even saved. Come on now, you're going through something now. Out here, you know you're going through something now, and you ain't even saved. You have to go through too much when you when you get saved. Do you hear what I'm saying? But I got somebody that's going to help me with what I'm going through with. Amen. Sometimes out there in the world, you're suffering by yourself. And sometimes you suffer and affect somebody else. Oh, y'all better come on with me now. Amen. But this is not a suffering way. This is a holy way. But there's suffering in the way. On this path. So you got to be willing to suffer persecutions. People talking about you. Isolating themselves from you. Why are you trying to hook up with them anyway? Oh, come on now. You got to hook up with, I miss so-and-so, so-and-so. Do they miss you? Sometimes they be going, oh, here he come. Sometimes people be talking about you. Amen. You know, they, one time somebody told me, said, you, you out of church again? I brought that on myself because I was in and out, in and out. So when they saw me, I went, <laughs> I, I was not doing right. And I went over to this girl's house and she said, you, you out here again? That was embarrassing. I took my little tail out of there and I ain't been back no more. And I went, went to the church and repented and I've been saved ever since. She, she didn't know she did me a favor. <laughs> Come on now. That was embarrassing. Yeah. Here you are again, man. See, I tell you, you gotta stay with us. Why is it so? Why is it so important that we hang out with the world? When the Bible said, "Have no fellowship," have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of what? Come on now. That's not to say that you can't be nice. You can't talk to them. You you can't have you know. You can't sit down and eat. But then when they start saying stuff and, and, you know, stuff that you don't do, something you, hey, it's time to get up. You know what, guys? I got to go. It was nice seeing you. Amen. Amen. And I'll be praying for you. Right. Amen. Oh, y'all better come. Some of y'all scared that you're going to be talked about. But it's something about going through. If you ain't suffering, you ain't got, like you said, you ain't got nothing. I'm going to tell you, Jesus had it made, didn't he? He didn't have to suffer nothing. Jesus didn't have to go through nothing. I thought y'all was going to dispute that. Jesus had to go through. He suffered a whole lot. And then he, hung on, he was hung on the tree. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Nailed to a tree. Think about that. What are, what are you being nailed to? Oh, it's quiet, like you said, it's quiet. You, we don't have to suffer that kind of violence that they suffered years ago to the, to, to the, uh, of, of giving up blood. But the little stuff we have to hear is, is mind thing. It's a mental thing. Most of the time, it's a mental thing. And you'd have thought somebody shot him. But you, that's when the time you got to ask God to make, give you strength. How many of us don't, don't want strength from God, power from God? I always want some more strength, some more power. Even though I got some, I want to build up on it. 
Come on now. You ever drunk something or ate something you like and you just kept going back to the refrigerator? You just kept going back? Boy, man, this is good. That's the way God, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Isn't he good? I know he's good to me. I want, I want, I want Minister Tony to read this scripture for me. Okay, read that scripture for me. Amen. Matthew 11 and 12. Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. Until now. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Did y'all hear that? Jesus said, we are that are sanctified is part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'm the only one come on, of come the kingdom on, of God. When we turn our life over to God, we became partakers of God's kingdom. Yes. God's yes. righteousness. Yes. Am I right about it? Amen. Did you know that? Come on now. Read it again. And from the days of John the Baptist uh -huh. until now. Until now. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Uh huh. And it wasn't nothing new. Even the prophets before John the Baptist went through some things, yes. they were killed. Yes. Amen. Put in the arena. A whole lot of stuff went on and they died because they, they believed in what God amen, was doing. They had faith in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But the kingdom of God suffered violence. Violence. He was warning his, 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 his he was warning his disciples then. Right. I want you to know, you can be part of God's kingdom. You gonna have to suffer violence. You gonna have to go. Look, you know, we're not gonna try to cover up nothing. You no. you gonna have to go through some things. So you got to make up your mind whether you're willing to go through. Or give up and go to hell. One of the two. The choice is yours. And you can't blame it on the devil neither. The devil made me do it. The devil can't make you do nothing. You don't have to yield to the devil. How many know I'm right about it? You don't have to yield to the devil. So you standing up there saying the devil. You know they used to have a... a Words, some the thing out where the devil made me do it. He even put t put it on their t-shirt. The devil made me do it. That wasn't nothing but the devil that had them to do that. Right, right. That wasn't funny. The devil didn't make you do nothing. Come on. But he could tempt you, but it's up to you. Right. God don't even make you live holy. See, come on now. Come on. God ain't gonna make you live holy. No, no, no. You know, God made me live holy because see, I almost died. That ain't making you. That was a choice you had to still make. Almost died in a car accident. And God made me get saved. No, God don't make you do nothing. He said, whosoever will, what? Let him come. Whosoever will, what? Let him come. Whosoever will, what? Let him come. He ain't going to force you to do nothing. He wants you to do it on your own. You want your wife to love you on, her, on your own. Oh, y'all better come on with me now. That's the way we got. But go ahead. What does that say? And from the days of John the Baptist yeah. until now, right. the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. So that means there got to be a struggle there somewhere. Amen. So whatever we go, whatever we got, you, you talking about getting to heaven, you got to take it by force. Amen. Come on now. <laughs> you got to fight for it. That's why he told you to put on the whole armor of God. Because you, you want, and we don't fight against a flesh and blood, but principalities and power and spiritual weaknesses in high places. That's what we're fighting. We're fighting the devil. We don't fight each other. Amen. Too many people busy fighting each other instead of fighting the devil. Hey, let's get together and fight the devil. But they're going to get together to fight, amen, the preacher in the church. Instead of saying, no, y'all, let's pray for the preacher. Let's pray for sister so-and-so. But you're going to be a, see, see, you see, you're going to go to hell with your mouth talking so much. Oh, y'all better hear me now. But you're going to have a struggle in this life. You're going to go through something. I mean, you know what? I'll never tell you everything's going to be hunky-dory and peaches and cream. Not everything. But God do give you a space of peace. 
He said he'll keep you in perfect peace. Those whose mind is what? Or who? Not my wife. Not your wife. Not your cousin. You got to focus on God. That's how you're going to get your peace. It's focusing on God and seeking God. God, I need some peace. Amen. Because I know there were times, sometimes I couldn't hardly go to sleep. And I said, God, I need some peace right now. Next thing I know, I was waking up five, six, seven hours later. Because God will give you that peace. Yes, yes, oh, y'all better come on now. So are you part of the kingdom? I'm asking you that question. Think about it. Examine yourself. Are you really part of the kingdom? Or are you playing with God? Somebody playing, brother. They playing. They playing. They playing. Don't play with God. Do you hear what I'm saying? Well, I'm serious. You only are serious on Sunday? Serious on Tuesday night? I'm serious about God every day. Every day I'm seeking God. Every day I was with God. I'm, you know what? I want to go to heaven. So I said, God, I want to go to heaven. Even if you take me now, I want to be ready. Because we don't know when we're going to die. It's appointed once for man to die. After that, what? You got to stand before God. Do you finally really realize and focus on that? that there's no other way? But the way God said it? Oh, y'all better come on now. But they get quiet on that. I don't know. I didn't know I had to go through all this. Don't you know a lot of stuff that you're going through is for your learning yeah. and it's for your making yeah. and so that you can be a help to somebody else when they time come, you could be able to say, child, I went through that. And if God brought me through, he could bring you through too. I know God. See, <laughs> that's testifying. Letting somebody know, make known his deeds before the congregation of the righteous. You testify what God brought you through, what you facing. You ain't got to tell all your business. But thanks, I was fronted, I confronted with something, and God delivered me. I went before God, and I'm 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 victorious, thanks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Instead of I don't know what I'm gonna do. I prayed. Well, how long did you pray? Did you just pray for about an hour? Did you pray for that? And now let me just say this too, because you know sometimes people think you ought to. That's up to you how God leads you. But sometimes people think you have to pray for hours for God to hear you. But God to hear you in a short prayer. All right. God to hear you was so a God. I need you right now. Right now. Instantly, God. Hallelujah. Sometimes people think they got to have a long, drawn out prayer. Before God works, God works when he hears you. All right. He's working in your behalf. He hears you. Amen. And the thing that you don't know what to say or how to say it, the Holy Ghost will go Hallelujah. to God. Yes. That's what I like about the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Amen. So you got to make it up in your mind. Whether you're going to be saved, whether you're not going to be saved. That cha-cha stuff in and out, in and out, in and out. And sometimes I can look on Facebook and tell who's carnal All right. and who's spiritual. All right. I'm going to say that again. Because sometimes you really show how you are on Facebook. Hello. Come on now. I'm going to say this now. Somebody pray for me. And I'm just going to use this church. Now, what, what sense does it make for the sister to come to church and don't have all this stuff on their face and all this whatnot, whatnot, but then when they get on Facebook, they all colored up and whatnot, and they taking these pictures to make them look like that. Why are you doing that? Think about it. Is that where your mind is? You got you're not dressing like that now, but on Facebook you got all kind of. Come on. Somebody ain't gonna like Bishop. That's right. that works. That works. Eyelashes this long. Come to church, you ain't got no eyes. You got your regular eyelash. 
but you want to put that stuff and you're supposed to be sanctified you put putting that stuff on there to look like the world uh oh somebody gonna stop watching me but that's okay i'll be looking at them they're supposed to be sanctified why they all colored up like that oh this prophet's quiet That means you don't like the way you look. Okay. You got to watch how you portray yourself, Amen. even on Facebook. You going to look holy? Look holy on Facebook. Amen. Come on now. Because Amen. Amen. I know there's certain things you can push and whatnot, and it'll give you all that sort of stuff. It'll make you look like you <laughs> a harlot. It'll make you look like that. I don't want to look like no harlot on Facebook. Somebody quiet. Some of you just learned something. Take it for what it's worth. Amen. Take it for what it's worth. I'm looking for. My goodness. Why are they all colored up like that? And some of them, some of the, some of the, some of the I got to say it. Some of them on the Facebook guys look like pimps. Look like they. Amen. Amen. You say you ain't got no business looking like no pimp like the world. I'm telling you like it is. Amen. Old things are passed away. Well, you know, I was just doing that for what? Tell me the, the tell me the benefit of doing that. You are who you are. So you're not happy for being who you are? Am I right, Evangelist? You didn't, you, you didn't think you was going to hear that, did you? I didn't think I was going to say it. But for the lack of knowledge, my people perish. They do things ignorantly, not knowing. You know, well, we're just having a little fun. And you looking like a gypsy? <laughs> and you looking like a gypsy. I'm going, my God. Now, I didn't mention no names, did I? but I ain't talking about you unless I'm talking about you. You know, you know, hey, y'all know, you know. You don't see me going on there looking like no pimp. Come to church and I'm looking all like church and stuff like that. And then I get on there, I'm looking like a hula. Uh-uh. I want the world to see me how God made me. That's right. Amen. Holy, sanctified. Yes, yes, yes. Undefiled. Amen. I heard the preacher say this, and I'm not knocking what he said. Because, you know, holiness is not just clothing. That's right. It's not. But it's in it. It's in there. Right, right. It is a lifestyle. But then it's in it, too, because right. he told them back then what to wear and right. what not to wear. Amen. Am I right about it? Yes, he did. So he wasn't knocking it down. I got I to hit, you know, because, you know, <laughs> holiness ain't this and that. Being all dressed up is the babe dressing in modest apparel. That's part of your holiness. Modest. Apparel. modest. So word. you're not being That's modest when you're up there Amen. putting on all kinds of stuff on Facebook. Amen. They watching it. They see it. They know what I'm talking about. They see it. They doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I only heard one preach. preach. But I'm gonna preach. I don't <laughs> what bishop said, I don't care if you don't never like it. <laughs> this has got to be told. Sometimes because of ignorance, people think say things. You can't pick up uh, pick up everything that, that the world does. No. Yeah, even in right. fashions. That's right, that's right. Amen. Whoo, this is rough. But it's right. 
modest. And I still say that go for men and women. So sometimes they think it's just for women. It's for men too. Come on now. Yeah, you got to be modest too. Your hair ain't got to be supposed to be way down there. It's a shame for a man to have long hair. But long hair is for the women. For the, that's their glory. Amen. Oh, y'all better come on with me. Now. I'm telling the truth. You're supposed to look like a man. You're supposed to act like a man. You're supposed to be a man. Be a man. Be a woman. I didn't say something wrong, didn't I? I'm going to sleep good tonight. But it's holiness without which. See, this is the kind of this is the kind of preaching and teaching that we, we he was talking about the old. <laughs> I love old school preaching. Amen. I know he do too, because he sound. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Ask for the old path. I believe that's, that's what he word. said. That's the word. Amen. Ask. Stand ye in the way. Come on. And ask Amen. for what? The, the new path? Oh, the modern path. Oh. It said the old path. Because in it, what? You find what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Child, you got you to gotta pump it up. You know, you got These are modern days now. What did God say? I, I approached God one time. I went to God and I said, God, if I need to change anything or tweak anything, I'll do it. Because I want to make sure what I'm preaching is what you want me to preach. And the reason why some people are not coming like they, I think they should come, you hear me say, I think, is because of what I might. You know what happened? That same night, Apostle Mitchell told me, said, God said, stand and don't change nothing. That was confirmation. And ever since then, can't nobody tell me nothing when it comes down to changing. I ain't changing. Come on. It's all right. Amen. Some people are given the change. Yes, they are. They're changing and they give it the change. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all know how you were raised in holiness. That's right. Amen. They know better. Holiness. I'm talking about holiness. Them sisters back there, boy. They had they dress us longer than than what he had our women do now. It was like down to to the floor. And ain't nobody asking you to put it down to the floor. But they ought not be looking up your skirt. No, 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 no. And not not be so tight until we can see the. That's right, that's right. The curve in your behind. Amen. Well, I didn't gain weight. If you had somebody to let it out, we'll get you another. Oh, it's quiet. (laughs) It's quiet. You ain't supposed to be walking around with these old tight. Like I said, I was telling me about those tight jeans and stuff like tight stuff. The women be all tight and whatnot. It's, it's, and sometimes you got to pull it up on there. You know that's too tight. I got a figure, honey, and I got to show it. Amen. When you go to hell, then you ain't going to be able to show it. All right. See, that preacher there, he's too, see, he was doing all right. I used to like him, but I got to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. I preach like this all the time. Don't I, y'all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. (laughs) I don't preach one thing in another church and then preach a thing in another church. That's a hypocrite. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I preach the same word everywhere I go. And then I go with wisdom. Amen. When you go in the church, you don't go in the church, amen, looking at who, who you can jump on. Oh, I'm going right. to tear these devils up. That's right. Bishop taught us that wisdom. Yes, yes, Just amen. because you see somebody doing something and we don't do it, you go jump on it right away. Right. Let people know you go to old landmark. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> you ain't got to prove it. Just live it. I, I preached at a funeral one time, Sister Crawford. I preached at a funeral. And I didn't tell them what church I was going to. But my speech betrayed me. 
Soon as I got through, the brother on the organ said, you go old landmark, don't you? I can tell by the way you. People can tell when you've been with God. <laughs> that you've been with a holy person. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hey, I, I ain't got to prove nothing. By your oh, feet. Holy glory to God. Amen. But then you go come out. That's right. That's and I right. love that man too. Apostle Mitchell. Amen. He's, he's Amen. dead and gone down in the presence of God. But that man did not take down for anything. That's right. That's and he'll right. tell you in a minute, oh, you know what? I don't care if you will never like him. Never. Never. Come on. Yes, that yes. door, what do you say? That door is what? Five feet. Seven feet tall and five feet wide. Seven feet tall, five feet wide. You don't like it? Hit the door. That's what he used to say. That's what he used to say. Brother Tony, I said that one time they left. <laughs> I said, oh, Kev, you don't never like it. That door is six feet tall and so and so wide. The next thing I know, they were gone. <laughs> but I still feel like that. But I had to use some wisdom. Be you, be yourself. But still, People know who, you, who you've been with. They knew the disciples had been with Christ. But when they went out, they didn't preach their own doctrine. Jesus taught them. He kept them by their side, his side, and taught them the things that they knew. And they built upon that. And when he left, he sent them a comforter to help lead and guide them. And they didn't change the message. How many in there changed the message? Been with Jesus. They knew they had been with Jesus. Can somebody say that about you? Who you been with? <laughs> uh. <laughs> hey. I've heard people tell me that uh, uh, they would tell people where they was from. I'm from Old Landmark. Oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. Not looking like that, you ain't. <laughs> They knew the doctrine, right, right. the teaching. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh you lying to me. <laughs> you couldn't even get away. I'm talking about sometimes sinners will tell you, because sometimes they will watch Bishop every Sunday. You say, I go to so-and-so church, and you doing that? Oh, no, you don't go there. For real. People, sometimes people out there in the world know you say, but whether you whether you're not saved. And some of them, again, sometimes people say, well, they sinners, they don't know. They don't know. Some of those sinners, a lot of those sinners was raised in the holiness, sanctified church. Their mama, their grandmama, and mama before that was holy. They know you can't sell them short. You can't say what they don't know. That's right. But they've been there. Is that Sister McCarthy, is it that tight? It's right, see. All right, I'm getting ready to let you go. Thank God for the minister. Amen. The apostle. The apostle, I'm sorry. The apostle. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm glad we're on the same warfare. Hey. Because if I don't get him, he'll get you. And if he don't get you, he'll get you. And if he don't get you, she'll get you. And if she don't get you, he'll get you. God's got somebody that's going to cry loud and spare not. And don't you know what? Sometimes people be trying to run from the truth and end up running to the truth. For real. They running from the truth and end up running to the truth. Man, they preaching the same thing. Who can get away from God? Who can hide from God? Let us bow our heads, oh gracious Father. One more time that you allow us to come into the house of God.
to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the words that have gone forth, oh God. And it went to accomplish what it will, and it has not returned void, oh God. And the purpose is to reach out to somebody that somebody might hear your word, oh God, and believe, oh God, and take it into their hearts and apply it in their mind and in their spirit, oh God, that they might call on you, oh God, oh God, increase my faith, oh God, oh God, turn me, oh God, change me, oh God. That's the way I want to be, God. I want to be the way you want me to be, be, God. And that's sanctified, holy. Wash me right now, God. Cleanse me right now, God. Purge me right now. Purge me, God, because of thy word, oh God. Because of the word, the power and the anointing of the word. Oh God, I see myself. Oh God, bless me, help me. Help your people, God. Them that are saved, them that are not saved, oh God. Them that are thinking or wishing or wanting to be saved, but the enemy is on their back, oh God. We are asking you, oh God, that you move in their behalf right now. Save, God. Wash, God. Deliver! Woo, my God, my God, my God. Do it, God. Your arms are stretched out. Stretched out right now. Come, come to Jesus. Right now. He will save you. He will save you. Right now. Amen. I say he'll save you right now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. Right now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. God bless you. Pray for us as we pray for you. Amen. Amen. My brother.